Evidence for climate change. Now, um, scientists um, can tell you what they think temperatures were like two million years ago, or even five million years ago. And yet, we've only had these things, thermometers, um, for the last 300 years. Uh, now, thermometers were invented by a man called Daniel Fahrenheit in 1714, but they weren't popularly used until the 1800s. Well, how on earth can we know what temperatures were like hundreds, thousands, millions of years ago then? The idea of this session is I'm going to show you four ways in which we can get a hint, get a glimpse into life in the past. Here is our first bit of evidence, and this is cave paintings. We can date cave paintings to within a few thousand years. Um, these paintings that you can see are from France and Spain, and we know that they were painted about 11 to 40,000 years ago. Now we can look at the creatures and you can get a hint of what the temperatures were like. If the animals are covered in fur, we know it would have been colder. If the animals we recognize um, to be current ones that live in savannah areas or warmer areas, we know that the temperature would have been warmer. However, they're difficult to accurately date and they are just one person's viewpoint, but they give a hint of what temperatures were like in the past. Our, the second thing we've got is we look at the amount of ice there is at the North Pole and at the South Pole. The idea being that if temperatures were warmer, there is less ice, and if temperatures are colder, there would be more ice because the oceans would be colder too. Problem with this technique is that it, um, we've only been doing this since 1979. So it's useful now, it could be useful into the future. We can see that the ice is shrinking, so the world is getting warmer. But this doesn't help us, does it, know what temperatures were like 100,000 years ago, or indeed millions of years ago. The third method we've got is to use thermometers around the world. There are a thousand weather stations, they're accurately recording the temperatures, um, but we've only been doing this over the last couple of hundred years. The other issue with uh, using thermometers is they're not evenly spread across the world. By far the most accurate method we've got of seeing what past climates are like um, is this one, um, which is ice cores. Now as snow falls, it builds up layer upon layer upon layer upon layer, and it crushes the snow at the bottom. It compacts the snow at the bottom, and the snow at the bottom turns into ice. So over time, layers of ice build up and up and up and up and up. This is current snow that's just fallen, and if we go down through the ice, this ice down here is thousands of years old. So what scientists can do is they can dig down through the ice, and then they find air bubbles that are trapped within the ice. And these air bubbles, like the ones that you can see in the picture, they have air from that time when the ice was created. Now, in parts of the Antarctic ice sheet, the ice can be five kilometers thick. And these air bubbles that are trapped in the ice at the bottom are 800,000 years old. Scientists look at the amount of carbon dioxide in those air bubbles. The more carbon dioxide gas there was, the warmer it was, because CO2 is a greenhouse gas. The less carbon dioxide, the colder it was. And this is our most accurate way of knowing what temperatures were like hundreds of thousands of years ago. So let's move on. Um, here is a summary of what we've learned today. Um, we record temperatures, we've got evidence about the past through cave paintings, sea ice positions, global temperature data, and ice cores. Ice cores are the most accurate for seeing the distance past, hundreds of thousands of years ago. Cave paintings give us a glimpse into life 10,000 to 40,000 years ago. Sea ice positions, global temperature data, they are fairly accurate, but they're very, very, very recent. In the GCSE exam, um, this is the sort of question you could be asked. Compare the reliability of two sources of evidence of climate change. 
In this case, you would just take two of them. So you might take ice cores, you might take cave paintings, and you would just be saying things along the line of, um, ice cores are fairly reliable because we've actually got air from hundreds of thousands of years ago, whereas cave paintings, it's approximate dating and it's just one person's opinion, um, one person's viewpoint, um, and it's, it doesn't accurately show the exact temperature. So you would chat along those lines.